Okay, yesterday we we're learning about salt shakers. You should have separate for meat and milk because sometimes you pour it over meat and the steam comes up or, or the kids will take the ketchup bottle and touch hot meat with it or hot pizza with it, whatever. So the Jewish custom is you have separate salt shakers, pepper shakers uh, for meat and milk. And many people, depending what type of house you have, will have separate ketchup, separate mustard for milkshakes and flakes if they end up touching each other. Okay, the next thing over here is, there's a very interesting mug of what? If somebody drinks with a dirty mouth, yeah, they should clean the, the can before they, or if they drink from the bottle, they should clean the bottle before the next person drinks. Yes, that's a very good idea. I was saying meat and milk. Yeah, it's okay. It's a child of meat and milk. Okay. Now, the Morgan Avram is a famous Morgan Avram. It's interesting that the Rebbe doesn't bring it down. Um, but the, the Morgan Avram brings down that the custom is you don't kosher from meat to milk and milk to meat. In other words, let's say you have a, a cutlery. It's a meat cutlery. And you want to make a dairy. The custom the Morgan Avram brings down, the minig is you don't kosher it from meat to milk or milk to meat. Only if you're kashering it, let's see, for Pesach. So then if it was meat, you can make it now milk. Once you kasher it for another reason. Or if it became tray for whatever reason it is, and you're kashering it, then you can make it whatever you want. But just to take something dairy and kasher it to milk, meat or meat to milk, the Morgan of Rambrach is not done. Dara HaShulchan disagrees with it, but the pearl, and the Al Rebbe doesn't bring down the din, so the question is, what does the Alter Rebbe hold? Uh, does he? Doesn't he? But the fact is, the custom is that we don't cash it from milk to flesh. But there is a famous dark tshuva that brings down that that custom is only when you cash it with hagola, with hot water. If you cash it with libun, you mean direct fire. So then you could cash it from milchiks to flesheks. And you're right, it says you shouldn't do it on a regular, constant basis, but every so often you could cash it from milchiks to flesheks. Where do you have this scenario? Very simple. You have a meat oven, and for Shavuos you want to make cheesecake. So it's a meat oven. How do you make cheesecake? So you, t- you cash it the oven, and then you can make cheesecake, and then you cash it back to make it a meat oven, okay? So there are, and that's the Veltas Mekel, that if you kosher from, with Libun, direct fire, not with hot water, <clears throat> so then you're able to kosher from meat to milk. Another thing that Dark Yitzhuva says, and this is also the accepted Minig, that you can kosher from meat to parif, or milk to parif. You just don't kosher straight from meat to milk or milk to meat. But you can make it parif. So you have to cook parif to define it as parif. Yeah, in other words, you kosher it and leave it for parif. You kosher anything, of course it's parif. That's the status quo. Correct. But I'm saying, what happens if you have a cutlery set or a knife, whatever, and you want to make it parif, but it's meat or milk. So that could show holds that you can, it brings down opinions, it says that you can kosher it and leave it parif. You shouldn't cash it to make it from meat to milk or milk to meat. But if you're making a part of it, it's fine. Then later on, if you change it to the, then you could. After life. Yeah, whatever. Not directly, not not right away. Okay, <clears throat> that's this. this uh, but again, uh, the other Shulchan says you could, but the pearl the minig is that we don't cash it for meat to milk, especially with hagala. Okay. Next is like this. What's the origin of waiting for meat to milk and milk to meat? Like, what's the origin? 
that you have to wait and six hours and you know well, what's the whole origin so the Gemara says the Gemara in Chulin says that if you eat a meat meal you're not allowed to eat in the same meal milk this is what the Gemara says if you have a meat meal you can't eat in the same meal you can't have milk not at the same time obviously that for sure you can't do but if you have a meal and a while later you're still in the middle of the meal and you have milk so it's fine okay that's what the Gemara says now some part some Rishenim learn that the Gemara means simple I mean there's no according to this Gemara which we don't pass like I mean because there's different definitions of what the Gemara means but some Rishenim learn what the Gemara means is okay eat a meat meal finish the meal you bench start the next meal you can have milk eggs right away but again don't get no we don't Pascal like this. But that will take six hours. No. Well, but benching takes six hours. Depends for whom. <laughs> People that say every word, it takes six hours. I'll never forget, it was a minute to Seder in the morning. There's a Bacher running from 770 to 749, which is Mamish, Mamish across the street. He's running to, to eat breakfast. It's a minute or two left to Seder. So the Meshgir, Reb Shalom Erozov, stops him. And he says, Seder is in two minutes. So he says to him in Yiddish, how long does it take to eat already? So Reb Shalom also said to him, the benching takes time. Forget the benching takes time. How are you going to get back for Seder? Okay, that's the, that's the way the, the, the thing went on in our days. Okay, now, the Rambam and the Rajba learn that that's not what the Gemara means. When the Gemara says you can't eat in that meal, you can't eat milk after meat, it means you can't have milk until the next meal. How much is the next meal? Six hours. Between meals, there's an average waiting of six hours. No, no, no. It's, it's 60 minute hours. No, no, no. Well, but as much as they're able to tell time. So, the Rambam, the Rajba, the Rosh, he brings out all the opinions that say, no, that's not what it means. Now, what's the reason why you need to wait six hours? So there's two reasons. There's the Rambam reason and the Tor brings down another reason. The Rambam says the reason why you need to wait six hours between meat and milk is because meat gets stuck in your teeth didn't have floss in those days. Meat gets stuck in your in your teeth. And for six hours, the meat in your teeth is still a fresh taste of meat. After six hours, the Rambam says, if there's still meat left in your between your teeth, you take it out, you rinse your mouth, and you don't have to wait anymore. But you can't, because of the meat stuck in the teeth, you can't have any milk for six hours. The tour brings down the reason that no, because it takes six hours to digest the meat in your stomach. We don't want to have meat and milk together even in the stomach until the food is digested. So the tour brings down that because it takes six hours for the food to digest, so then you have to wait six hours. One minute. What? One second. One second. What's the difference between the two reasons halachically? So, Marshall, if somebody would eat chicken soup without any salad, just drink liquid. According to the Rambam, all you'd have to do is rinse your mouth because there's nothing stuck in the teeth. But according to the other reason, the tortoise reason, that it, it takes six hours to digest you'd still have to wait six hours. Or another thing is, what happens if a person, <laughs> years ago they didn't have blenders to, for baby food. How did they give a baby meat? The mother would chew the meat, 
not to swallow it. She would chew the meat, and then afterwards, chew, chew it up, she would give it to the baby to eat. So what would be if a mother chewed them, or a father for that matter, somebody chews meat, but they don't swallow it. If you're looking, the reason for the stomach digestion, you didn't eat anything. If you're looking because it's stuck in the teeth, you need six hours. So they have halachic differences. So therefore, halacha says, we are strict with both reasons. That means even if one of the two reasons apply, even though the other one doesn't apply, you still need to wait six hours. Unless, unless what happens if a woman wants to taste chicken soup, yeah? And she takes a spoonful and she just you know, touches her lip to it. But she doesn't swallow it. Then neither reason applies. So then the din is she would have to rinse the mouth and eat something, but you know you wouldn't need to wait six hours. If she ate a little bit of the soup, then you need to wait six hours. But see the tour. It takes six hours for the flesh to digest. Right? Correct. Okay. So I'm assuming we need an average person. Every person from sure body looks a little different, yeah. But you when you're gonna have everybody go for a DNA test to Right, so so let me say it needs the average person. However, what if somebody comes and says Actually, I, uh, a good example is <coughs> a, a medication that slows down digestion. Meaning, you know, like, forget, no one's coming to the doctor saying, I have slow digestion. No, you say, I'm on a particular okay. medication. Okay, okay. So, the Gemara talks about various different cases and shots, not about this necessarily. And the Gemara says, when the Chachamim say something, it doesn't matter. This is it. Whether it applies to you or not, this is what the Chachamim say. And therefore, it applies to everybody across the board. So that being said, if Taka someone's digestion was slower, it doesn't have to wait six hours. It doesn't have to wait more than six hours. Well, and how about the split with Milchus? Huh? Split with Milchus? Huh? Split with Milchus? Chicken soup doesn't take six hours to digest. Yeah, but once it's slay sugar already, we don't differentiate between liquids and milk. And so why always be Milchus? I'm not Mahmir, this is not, this is, everybody says this, even the Svardim. There's distinction, really, the Svardim? Yeah, even yeah. the Svardim, yeah, believe and it is. No, because Svardim... Those that keep kosher. No, I'm saying... Those that don't keep kosher. Svardim in Iran, they, they made a distinction between chicken and meat altogether. The, the Gemara makes a distinction between meat and milk. One's biblical, one's rabbinic. No, you mean... Uh, but in Shulchan you, you're, 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 you're Svardim basically... Chicken, chicken, chicken and milk. I know, chicken, chicken and meat. I know. Chicken and, and because chicken, biblically, is not meat. Right. Okay. Yeah, got it. So therefore, nevertheless, your own friend uh, Beis Yosef was Sfardi, by the way. Okay. Uh, it says chicken. You also have to wait six hours. Tradition in Iran, they did not. How long did they wait? Distinction because in Iran, we How? never had meat and chicken get mixed in the butcher. Whereas here, the only reason... There's nothing to do with that. What? Nothing. 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 Nothing.